If your dog is like that, he or she might have possession aggression. In this video, you're going to learn what to do about it. Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, welcome. If you've yet to do so, I encourage you to check out my page on Patreon and get a copy of my free book. You can click the links in the box below for more information. With little Tula, she's pretty possessive about this bone, to the point that if I'm wanting to take it away or grab it, she starts growling. <laughs> nice poodle, give me a little bone. <laughs> God. Well, the first thing is recognizing, you know, what, what is extreme possession and possession aggression. It's just that, you know, your dog has their specific thing, like Tula and her little toy and She's showing some serious growling, maybe potential to bite um, when you're going near it. Oh, you're so aggressive. Oh, you're so tough. God. There is the sign of a killer. Okay. Next thing, ideally you're preventing this from happening in the first place. Hopefully you've had your dog, you're starting out this, watching this video as a puppy. And you're like, okay, he's already growling. He's acting all protective about this bone or the specific treat that he that you have. So right then is the best time uh, to prevent this from escalating into a much more of a serious problem. So imagine if Tula is a little puppy and she's got this little bone of hers that she's guarding. And I'm gonna go in, but I've got my secret weapon is this. Got a treat. So I'm saying, Tula, I'd like to have your little bone. Good girl. And look what I have. If you don't growl, look what you're going to get. It's a yummy little piece of chicken treat. <gasps> oh, you didn't respond? Oh, good girl. Thank you for letting me have your bone. Also with the puppies, just get used to the whole thing. I mean, you know, just handling your dog, you know, making it a normal thing. And you're going to go in and, you know, where you're going to be you know, petting their feet, you're gonna be grooming her, you're gonna be checking her hair, her ears, all those things that might lead to some kind of growling or aggressive type behavior, that you're normalizing that really early on. She, you, he or she is used to the whole idea of, you know, accepting you as the sort of pack leader, and, and that's just what you do, that's normal. Go girl, as much handling as possible, making that stuff normal, we're gonna nip it in the bud. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say you've got an adult dog you know you got a tula who's no longer a puppy and you're like okay wh where should i start and, uh, all the trainers are first suggesting you know just avoid the conflict in the first place by not having uh, giving your dog access to that specific item and or thing they're being possessive of or just not having it. This is the only thing that triggers her aggression. I gotta substitute this for something else and just not have it so I'm not having to deal with this issue in the first place. So, uh, let's put my money where my mouth is. Oh God, I gotta get into this thing. See what I think about how comfortable it is. Oh, to begin with, this really is a small, medium-sized kennel. Only fits about half of me. It's not a lot of space to move around. Perhaps I can see why I may not want to be into a kennel. For some people and some dogs, it's not as simple as that. Perhaps they're possessive and acting aggressive towards a number of different things that they're you know, really guarding. Say for instance, just their food. You can't get near them when you're feeding them their food. So that's not an option. So many of the trainers are now recommending, you know, that if you've got a dog, say for instance, that's got this severe uh, possessive aggression towards, say, a toys or treats, that to start with, we're going to start to intervene, that they only have access to that in a really 
isolated confined space so they're not going to be causing you any harm and it's in a much more controlled way so they're in a kennel they're in their own little sec separate room and then they get access to those treat that treat or then they get access to that toy but not sort of generally throughout the house uh, where they can display all this aggressive behavior and also potentially put you in harm's way as well this is your little imaginary kennel and confined space now you can have your little toy there you go hmm there Oh. What are we doing? Get Go with your ball. Go girl. Okay. Drop it. Okay, drop it. No, drop it, Tula. Alright. It's really good to teach your dog the leave it or the drop it command. Just trying to demonstrate there in Tula. I don't know just how well that turned out. But imagining that he or she has said bone or thing that they're extremely possessive of, um, you're getting back to training basics. I mean, it comes from initially starting out with just basic training skills. You know, sit, come, stay it may mean getting your dog back to basic training. And then teaching that simple command, like leave it or drop it. So if she has her bone, good girl Tula, here you go, go get it. Get your bone, go get it. Go get your bone, come on. Come on, we're on video, go get it. Ah, will this work? Good girl, bring it back. Good girl, good girl. Good girl, good girl. Okay, drop it, drop it. Tula, drop it, drop it. Good girl. Now imagine that you've got a dog that has sort of this extreme behavior. You know, they've got this well-adapted behavior of just being extremely aggressive. It's not as simple as just confining them to a small space. You know, some slight positive rewards uh, when they drop their treat. They're not at all, you know, responding to those so simple suggestions. Secondly, it's just a very ingrained behavior. Then you're gonna, first of all, I'd encourage you to seek out a professional dog trainer. Then secondly, they're probably going to discuss going on a process of desensitization and counter conditioning. And that's going to be something that happens over weeks. Bring your bone. Okay. Okay. Good girl. There's your bone. Ah, Tula. Good girl. I really want you to not growl and drop your bone. Oh, good girl. <laughs> so what happened is I brought out a tasty chicken treat. And I've completely distracted her. And this is sort of one of the you know, suggestions around training wise, right? We're trying to like give her a reward for like I've said, drop it. You've dropped it. Imagine that you've dropped it. She could care less about the bone now. And then I'm gonna say like, good girl. Oh, then you get the positive reward. Mm. Obviously there's much more to it if you're looking at desensitization. It means you're exposing your dog again and again, uh, you know, to that, that stimuli as far as the whatever thing that that they're possessed of being active, aggressive towards and being possessive of. Then over, over a course of time though, they're getting you know, rewarded in a positive way uh, with something else, either via distraction or via reward. So that becomes, you know, it's, there's so much less happening in their brain to cause them to be you know, aggressive in the first place about, you know, said toy or whatever it may be. And obviously there's a lot more involved, much more than I'm gonna teach you in this short little um, five minute YouTube video, but I think you sort of get the basic sense or the basic principles. Thank you guys so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets. If you've yet to do so, I'd love for you to click up there to subscribe to my channel. Then when you click the link, burn there in the box below and you sign up for my newsletter, I can send you my free book on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies. Tula would like to wish everyone else a Merry Christmas. Is that right, little Tula? And a less dog possessive aggression new year there you go see you can have your treat and you don't have to growl uh -huh. what a good curl uh, there good girl